Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you tonight and call to order the, um, what is it, May 2nd, regular meeting of the Olathe School District Board of Education. Ms. Hibbs, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Ashley? Here. Dr. Daniels? Here. Mrs. Felter? Here. Mrs. Martin? Here. Mr. Parker? Here. Mr. Poland? Here. Mr. Shear? Here. Would you please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a full agenda this evening, and we are going to start with National Teacher Day presentation. Um, I believe Mr. Don Branham and Ms. Harmony Jarrett are going to give a presentation. Good evening. Um, I have brought a banner with me today to help celebrate National Teacher Day, which is tomorrow, May 3rd. Um, kind of kicks off Teacher Appreciation Week, and this is something that my students got to help um, do when we were talking about adjectives. So they've picked adjectives or words that they thought of when they thought of teachers. Um, it's a day tomorrow for us to celebrate, for students, parents, and our community to celebrate teachers. And um, we've all come in contact with teachers throughout our life, and um, many of us working here um, come into contact with them every day still. And um, we want to make sure that we honor, appreciate, and recognize those teachers tomorrow. This tradition began in the 1940s and 50s when a teacher in Arkansas actually wrote a letter to Eleanor Roosevelt saying that we needed a, te a day to honor teachers. Um, and since the 1980s, it's been um, federally recognized, nationally recognized as um, National Teacher Day. And uh, the first week of May is National Teacher Appreciation Week, so um, we'll be doing that next week. And I just wanted to share a quote with you guys that really inspires me. It's a quote um, from Aristotle that says, teaching the mind without teaching the heart is no education at all. And I know um, being a para and an aide and now a teacher here, I've been around Olathe School District for the last decade, and I know that's something that we really strive to do in Olathe. Um, while teachers teach standards and curriculums and teach for assessments, we also teach um, values and really our learners right along with our student right along with our students we're mentors um, counselors some days um, as well as teachers so I hope um, that you think about that when you think tomorrow about teachers and next week and realize that teachers have an impact long after um, the school day is over and long after the year is over and I hope that tomorrow especially on National Teacher Day that you will um, think of a teacher that you know and maybe hug some that you see so um, thank you and for having us Thank you very much. Next on our agenda, we are going to have a presentation on our 21st century high school programs, which are celebrating their 10th anniversary. And leading us tonight are Mr. Jim Bradford, our 21st century programs, communications, and internships person. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not sure how that goes exactly. And then Dr. Gretchen Shirk, our Executive Director of General Administration and High School Programs. Well, thank you very much. And, and it's a pleasure to have Jim come to the podium with me tonight and share information with the board. I'm going to very quickly highlight some of the history of our 21st century programs because in my mind it's kind of hard to believe that we are 10 years into these programs, and it seems like just yesterday when this was a dream that we were dreaming uh, through a variety of input that was shared with the community. Um, we studied at that time, school to career was a, was a driving force, magnet schools, high schools that work, a number of different and variety of, of impacts on high school education at the time. But as our journey began, we were charged with looking at what would our Olathe schools look like in the 21st century. We were going to be opening our fourth high school, um, Olathe Northwest, and we wanted to have some cutting edge programs and a new way of looking at high school education. Um, some overarching themes that were brought forward from our focus groups that involved our business and industry folks, our patrons, uh, post-secondary folks, parents and staff, talked about things like well-rounded, happy adults, um, recognizing the changing world. Again, this is 2000. Um, teach life skills, have classes be relevant, and talk about and, and speak with our kids, teach our kids about ethical standards and what it means to be ethical adults in our world. Then we had focus points that began to come forward from our focus groups that 
played out as we began our design team phase, and these are the, you see the five here. The programs were to include these five things, career and real world experiences, broad based technology applications, international studies, languages and cultures, instructional, creative, best practice kinds of methodology with flexible scheduling, and then again, ethics, citizenship and quality of life. <clears throat> when we went to the, to the focus groups, you may remember we anticipated they might come back to us and say, we want a program on this or that. They really didn't. They came back with these more broad-based themes. So then we established a district-level steering team that, it was consi that consisted of almost every division in the district. And we then went to our students and asked them the kinds of things that they would like to be interested in, in terms of new programming. We formed some additional subcommittees that included, of course, the communications piece. Um, we were talking about summer camps at that time, and then our favorite topic, budget. Um, we then really dug in as design teams, and we were challenged to do a number of things. The design teams were consisted of post-secondary as well as business and industry folks and our staff, but we were challenged to be innovative. We were challenged to definitely engage high student interest. Um, again, look at best practices, support the academic core, um, look at workforce trends, um, review stakeholder focus group findings, because that was a big part of our process, was the input that we garnered from our communities. Um, we were interested in not in we were interested in having our programs be broad enough that they addressed career ladders. So it wasn't just one specific um, vocation, but it was a broad spectrum and opportunities for students. Transferable skills, so that again, they wouldn't be locked into only one skill, but would be broad-based kinds of skills. And certainly the piece that was very important to us also was developing partnerships so that our students would have opportunities, not just in our classrooms, but as they went out in the community in, in internships, shadow ships, and those kinds of connections. So believe it or not, in 2003 and four, we launched the original seven, uh, two programs at Olathe North at that time called Biotechnology and Health Careers and then Earth Science Frontiers, two programs at Olathe Northwest, Aerospace Engineering and E-Communication Entertainment Production. And then at that time, we also had three what we called enhancement programs that were located at all four high schools because we had very and still have very strong uh, general education programs in fine arts, international studies, and business and entrepreneurship. Again, themes that came through from our focus groups. Then as the years progressed, the next year we launched a couple of more programs at Olathe North, another e-communication program, Distinguished Scholars Program, and our sports medicine and athletic training. Then in 2005-06, Olathe East and Olathe South came on board with their programs that were site-based programs for the students that would be attending their high schools, their leadership program at East and environmental design and at South, their professional careers academy and their computer and software engineering. Through the course of these 10 years that the programs have been in place, there have been a continuum of ever-evolving opportunities for our students. Um, our interest is in continuing engaging our students as we look at our retention data as well as our continued interest from our eighth graders coming in as ninth graders continues to be interest in our 21st century programs, which brings us to the point of our presentation, which is cel the celebration of our 10 years of our 21st century programs. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, and kind of as um, as we kind of looked at the start of this this school year, we were realizing that we're beginning the tenth year of these programs, and we, we kind of figured we needed something um, to really give us an opportunity to share these great stories of these these students who have come through these programs over the first ten or first nine years and, and going into this year. Um, there are so many great stories, and we just needed a forum somehow to kind of tell these stories. So we came up with this idea, this, this 10 at 10, um, pretty self-explanatory when you, when you think about it. You were, we did 10 stories, about 10 alumni for the 10th anniversary of, of the programs. Um, kind of a, just a look, where, where are they now? What are they doing? How did the, uh, the 21st century experience that they had, how did that kind of um, build and mold them and, and kind of take them into that, that post-secondary um, um, experience and kind of in, into college? Oops, excuse me. Okay, um, I'm, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk about just a handful of these that really kind of stood out. We've we've put together. Uh, we're not done with the series yet. It's gonna culminate here at the end of the school year and, and leading into our uh, 
um, the end of um, the first part of June. Um, Christy Carter is a, is a student from, uh, from Olathe North who got endorsed with the uh, geoscience program, um, did a rain barrel, rain barrel uh, project her senior year, um, and that project is, was kind of the, the, the launching pad for her to get a scholarship to Iowa State, Iowa State University. Um, a couple summers later, she ends up um, in a, uh, um, Anchorage, Alaska in a research project for, uh, for, uh, for NOAA. Um, which is just a spectacular experience for her, and she's going to be finishing up um, at Iowa State um, here later this month. Uh, Travis Tannehill um, kind of got into the leadership um, piece at um, Olathe East, the leadership studies program, um, kind of carried that over to, uh, to Kansas State University where he became a leader on the football team and was actually awarded the uh, Bill Snyder Leadership Award as a junior um, and was an all Big 12 tight end uh, for the uh, Big 12 champion uh, K-State Wildcats this past fall. And actually, um, as um, timing of this couldn't have been any better, this past Sunday, uh, Travis signed a free agent contract with Cleveland Browns and will be going to, uh, to minicamp with them later this month um, playing tight end for, uh, for the NFL, uh, NFL team. Um, a couple others, um, Nate Warner was one of the first um, – one of the first uh, sports med um, really kind of that really took the uh, took the ball and ran with it uh, to to borrow a sports uh, analogy. Um, he the the funniest thing about talking with him is 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 he said when, from the start he said you know I just wanted to be an, an NFL medicine guy. That's how little he knew about doing what he wanted to do. Uh, so he went through the program, did some did some great work, went on to uh, went on to K State, worked with uh, with their athletic teams. Um, Ended up getting a uh, an internship with the San Francisco 49ers, um, and then went on to grad school to get his master's at Auburn, where he was the uh, the head trainer for the swim and dive team, um, was part of their SEC championship team, and then just um, a couple months ago uh, was was uh, was let he let uh, was let know that he uh, is going to be or starting work actually in the next couple of weeks as a, uh, uh, a staff member for the uh, Carolina Panthers. Um, and a, another NFL team, and actually, I was checking some schedules, and the Browns and the Panthers do not play each other. Um, so the only way that they could play each other, being in two different conferences, we would have to cheer for a Panthers and Browns Super Bowl. Which, if anybody is familiar with football and the NFL, knows how rare that would probably be. The chances of that are very, very slim. So you never know. You never know. So uh, the fourth one that, that I want to kind of talk about is uh, Brian Tortoro, who came through the e-com program at, uh, at Olathe Northwest. Um, th the best thing about uh, Brian's story, he's now down in Nashville uh, doing a lot of different things within the music industry, um, doing some recording, um, doing some studio, um, helping build out studios. Actually, he's working with Keith Urban right now, helping build out his sound studio in Nashville, and just recently uh, finished out as the director of photography for uh, Dave Stewart, who was a former member of the band The Arrhythmics from the 80s. I don't know if anybody remembers that band. Um, he's doing some solo work now, and um, uh, Brian worked on his... Uh, 2012 documentary and was the director of photography doing that uh, I think it was 11 camera live shoot that he did that documentary on so that was a, a big feather in the cap for him and the best part about that is he was um, really didn't have a whole lot of post-secondary education uh, took a few classes down at a uh, at a, um, a school down in Nashville but a lot of what he's doing today he said is a direct correlation to what he learned from that econ program so um, that, that really, really um, kind of resonates with, with what we're trying to do with these 21st century programs. Um, a, f a few others that we've, that we've talked with, we've talked with um, um, Megan Zierin from uh, the Pref Professional Careers Academy. She was over to Lake the South. She's working with the KU Alumni Association at KU. Um, there's another uh, gentleman that graduated from Olathe East with the uh, environmental design who won a uh, aircraft design competition, uh, took third place in a competition last year. Um, another uh, student from um, Olathe, mm. Olathe East. Uh, uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're working on the on the on the, the ten the, the ten of them. that will be done by the end of this month. So um, you can check on the uh, the twenty first century website has all of those, and they'll be they'll be up there, and, and you can read all about uh, these experiences um, throughout throughout uh, their college career and their post secondary career. Um, we are doing a uh, kind of a culmination of this of this ten year um, um, celebration is going to be a kind of a, a celebration 
uh, we're gonna have that the, our, that the IRC kind of a 10, 10th anniversary celebration on June 3rd. Um, it's gonna be kind of an open house. People will be able to come in. Uh, people that have been involved in the programs help build them to what they are today. Um, some of the uh, the folks that were part of the of the district that helped get, build these, and the people that are that are part of the district now that are continuing to build these, um, we'll have a chance to talk with all of the uh, facilitators for the current programs and some of their their previous students and current students. So it's an opportunity to to maybe stop by and say hello and say thanks, and uh, just a, an opportunity to to celebrate what uh, what we're doing here. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. board members. Any comments? Questions? How many students do we have going through this on an annual basis, through any, through all of them combined? All of them combined. I can't, I couldn't give you a number unless I could do math quickly in my head. Okay. But it's approximately twenty five percent of our high school kids are in in our twenty um, first century programs. Okay. Are there any particular programs that we have so many students involved that we have to turn them away that they're not able to um, enroll in it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have, have had some limitation in the past couple of years just because of budget and, and the inability to add additional staff to grow the programs bigger. And then we also have facilities um, issues. Many, Several of these programs are pretty facility heavy in terms of uh, the kinds of equipment or, or just space that they require. And so that's some limitation. But in general, um, the, the facilitators do a very nice job, and Jim does an excellent job of promoting and visiting with middle school students in terms of talking to them about what does it take to make this kind of choice for your high school career. So that I think we feel very confident, I know we do, that the students who get in um, are the right students in the right place at the right time, and then they do have the opportunity to apply again their sophomore year if they aren't accepted uh, their ninth grade year. My last question, is there any one new century program, 21st century program that we're looking at that we haven't moved into yet? Anything that we're looking at in the future? You know, over the course of the 10 years of the program, certainly other topics have surfaced, and certainly the world has changed over the course of the 10 years. So there are other um, particular other areas that may surface and may be of interest to be pursued in the future, yes. She didn't tell you. Are they surprised? <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll make one comment. I would love to see us look at getting uh, ropes or cords for those that go through our program. Right now, there's no recognition at graduation like that. And I know I've heard from several that they would really enjoy that. They work really hard. Okay, next on our agenda, um, we do an annual parent and staff survey, and I believe that Dr. Allison Banikowski, our Deputy Superintendent, is going to make a presentation. I am. It's a pleasure to be able to provide you some information this evening. You've, of course, had written reports that articulated some of the results that we achieved. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the employee staff survey uh, as that was requested last month, and a little bit about our parent survey. So it's a lot of information, and I'm just going to try and highlight some knowing that you had uh, this information previously. The first one is first to remind us that we do do district surveys and we gain a lot of input and it helps us with our decision making so it's very important. Uh, you notice that we do a January and February staff and then parents. And it is an anonymous survey we provide it in both English and in Spanish and we provide paper copies for those who either don't have access to technology or are uncomfortable with technology. And of course we use the results both at the district level and at the building level. Uh, let's talk a little bit of why surveys. I think that just sometimes we have to remember that there's good reason to use surveys. Uh, we have our own constructive survey so we can ask the questions that we want to ask. It allows us for disaggregation. For example, we can disaggregate between certified and classified individuals, or we can disaggregate by the different buildings so that a building can actually get their results and be able to react to those results and uh, it helps us to look at uh, perception. And again, staff survey, parent survey, but we also do student surveys and gather perception data from our students in a variety of uh, ways and uh, frequently had an opportunity to share with you some of the student exit survey results uh, at the culmination of their senior year. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the staff survey results, and I'm just going to highlight that. It's a lot of data uh, that you had last month in a, an executive summary. 
First of all, 78% of our staff <coughs> completed the survey, and that is extremely high. Uh, you, as you look at surveys, it's lucky sometimes to have 20%, and that's considered statistically significant. We had 78%, so we should feel very good about that. Uh, we have continued to grow our classified individuals uh, as a group, and that has been a, a challenge that we've been working on. It's high. It's not as high as we would like it to be, but it is growing, and so we're pleased about that as well. We had the survey results results in five different areas, as you can see from the Board of Education, to some overall feelings. Let's just take a quick look. Here were the two questions that were asked about the Board of Education on the staff survey. And you can see that these are rigorously <coughs> high, and we feel good about that. Uh, we always set a very high bar of 85 percent uh, minimally on our uh, uh, results, so we feel very good about those results as well. And of course, I always think it's uh, challenging on that provides adequate resources when you work with what you have been given. So that sometimes is very difficult, and yet it is, it is high. Uh, as you look at all this data uh, as you laid it out of the screen, it's a lot of information to look at. And I thought I would just pick out a couple that we looked at for an improvement. And this is areas that we either uh, trend-wise isn't moving as fast as we'd like it to be, or maybe it's not high enough to, we always try to look at about 85% with our plus or minus uh, confidence interval there. So you can see that we have uh, the district ideas. Uh, that's an area that we continue to look at. Um, and making sure people un understand that we're asking them for input. Uh, and uh, sometimes we think we ask too many times for input, uh, but that's something that we want to, to look at. Uh, financially, uh, making sure people are aware of that. Actually, that was quite a high percentage of unsure. So uh, I, uh, Mr. Hutchison has done so much this year to inform individuals about the budget, how the budget is developed, and yet that isn't as high as we'd like it to be. But again, a very high percentage of unsure. Sure. Uh, so that's an area that we continue to look at. And uh, so you can see some of those areas. We would also highlight uh, that the mission, 94% individuals said they know the mission of the school district, which is very good. You want your organization to be able to know what their mission is. And you can see that's high. Uh, and, and that uh, the school district strengthens the community. And we often hear from Mayor Mike talk about the importance of the school district on the community. So that's very important that our staff feels that way as well. Uh, as we look at this valuing differences, we can kind of lump them all together. They are very strong, which means we have a very good organization that's looking at valuing the differences that our people and our individual staff members bring to the, to the organization, so that's very strong. We have 14 questions that we ask about the specific work environment. So we've asked people to think of the Board of Education, to think of the district as a whole, but now to think about where they work in the organization. And again, you can see that we have um, some very, very strong responses, and we feel very good about that. Uh, I would highlight just a couple. Uh, the legal ethical behaviors of our administrative staff is very strong, and our staff recognizes that. And that's very important. And you can also see uh, that um, one of the areas that we'd like to highlight is the recognition. We went up over 10 points in uh, staff feeling they've been recognized and appreciated for their work. And that's a great increase uh, for a survey to show that kind of increase. So I think we should highlight that. We also should highlight the, the uh, area that talks about, look down here a little bit, uh, a very safe and uh, safety in our uh, organization, and that's an, also a very strong, a safe and secure work environment, 92 percent practically. I mean, that is extremely strong, especially in a day and age when people sometimes aren't as secure at their work environment. So that's very positive. The uh, next one that I want to just highlight is workload. Uh, that's a challenge for us. It has been a challenge for us, and certainly as we uh, reduce the number of staff members doing the same amount of work or more, uh, that may be an area that we are challenged with. With, but it also a very positive one is our 90, almost 92 percent, saying that they're able to use their talents and skills. Let's kind of look at uh, the comments. We had a lot of people that like to leave comments, which is great. 530 uh, uh, comments were left by 441 respondents. And you can see lots of compliments, and that's always exciting, some concerns and questions. Uh, let me highlight just a couple of those. Uh, for example, concerns were technology access. Uh, there were con concerns about budget and are we going to have enough funding to do what we need to do for students. 
uh, some questions and concerns about equity, making sure that all of our buildings and uh, have this, uh, similar programs and facilities. Uh, certainly there was also uh, some things about uh, the difficulty of the expectations. So all those concerns have been analyzed specifically by different department heads as well as being analyzed by each building and uh, school. Uh, questions, um, one was very specific, we need a bell on our kitchen door. Um, and so hopefully the administrator's looking at that. Uh, Arbor Creek needs an addition. So that was a question. Anyone that leaves their name on a question, we get back to them particularly. So if it's a question about HR, Mr. Payne gets back to that individual. And lots and lots of comments about specific schools and personnel. <coughs> Every appraiser works with an individual to make sure that they've analyzed both the results and their comments for their particular school or their building. For example, I work with Cindy Galemore. We've gone thoroughly over the, the results that came from the NLSC. And here are some two uh, and very nice overview uh, questions that we ask, and you can see how rigorously high these are. 91.6% of our staff say they are satisfied with their job, and uh, many people would beg to have these kind of results in an organization. And also you can see that 96% of our staff indicate that they are proud to work for the Olathe School District. So that gives you just a capsule view. Take a deep breath of the, the staff survey, let me talk to you a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, uh, we always want to say that we're only an organization as good as we are because of the quality people. And so it's important that we tap them on an annual basis to get their perception of working in the Olathe Public Schools. Let's talk a little now about the parent survey. Uh, again, these are uh, you've had information about that, and uh, hopefully you've been able to kind of digest that a little bit. But let me give you some highlights. First of all, we ask questions that are the national Gallup poll type kind of questions so that we have some comparison nationally. We have Board of Education questions. We ask about the district as a whole. And then we ask parents by level, if you have a child in elementary school, give us some information, middle school, high school, as well as some things about 21st century programs, transportation, and then overall satisfaction. So let me just highlight a few. First of all, we had 22% of our uh, parents complete the survey. That really isn't, you know, we're kind of, uh, we like like more. Uh, it's increased and we feel good about that, but we'd still like to see uh, some more results from our parents to give us some more indications. And so we continue to work on what's the best way to do that. Uh, we've done it parent-teacher conferences, we've done it email, so we're looking at different ways always. Very statistically significant, but probably not as big as we'd like yet. And we do have a range of parents that have had their kids, they're new to the system, and versus those all would also that were, have been in the system for quite some time. So it's good for us to be able to look at all areas in that. Uh, let's take a look at some of these questions. These were the national questions uh, that we looked at. And again, we, were, we are very strong as a community when we think about our public schools. And you can see that 95%, uh, over 95%, uh, think that the Olathe Public Schools should get an A or a B. And uh, gosh, that it just keeps continuing going up, and that's just extremely strong results. You can also see that we have very strong results for our teachers and our administrators, and our parents think that our teachers, uh, and as well as administrators and principals, are very strong, 91.3%, 93.1%. So gosh, that is exciting. If you look at nationally, I'd like to be able to compare that with you, but of course they don't haven't released the 2013 results yet. But if I look at the 2012 results, you can see that nationally, most people think their local schools, 48% of them should get A or B. You can see what ours is, 95.3%. So our individuals who live in this community recognize the strength of our school district. So those are very positive results. You can also see that the Board of Education, we asked a new question this year uh, that Dr. Berry had so that we can compare between also the staff survey, so we had some comparability. Uh, you can also see that those are strong and we feel good about those. And again, uh, we uh, look at that nice increase on the trusting the board to balance the needs. And so that's another positive that we want to look at there. As you can look at the district as a whole, lots of data. Uh, I would just highlight just a few areas. The first things that I would uh, highlight are some of the areas of improvement that are possible improvement for us. Again, how the district is doing financially was rated lower. But if you look at it, it was also an extremely high percentage of unsure that we just don't know. And so that's an area that we continue to look at. Mr. Hutchison and uh, Maggie Kolb looks at that as well as how can we uh, 
increase that communication. But again, it wasn't so much they disagreed. They just don't, aren't, aren't sure. And that same thing on de demonstrating budget accountability and transparency, <coughs> very high percentage of unsure. Again, the same thing with a personnel at the district level, responsive and courteous. Uh, that's lower than we'd like it to be, even though it's about 80%. Uh, but again, a high percentage of unsure. I didn't have, I've never had contact with anyone at the district level, so I don't know if they're responsive and courteous because I've never contacted them. So we might take a look at the way we've worded that. And then the leadership at the level, again, a high percentage of unsure. I'd like to highlight four things that were very strong. Uh, first, the first two, uh, we uh, compare well with neighboring districts and they are informed, and that's a very high percentage, and you, the community gets an excellent value for their services, and also the district maintains its facilities. So again, very strong uh, results in a few areas that we're looking at for improvement. In the elementary level, it was hard to highlight anything here because everything is very strong and very good. I did want to highlight one, and that was students feel safe at school, 96.7%, and isn't that what we want our young people in schools to feel and their parents to feel? Feel. But also look at that addressing bullying, how a great increase there from uh, 79, almost 80% to 88.4%. That's a great <clears throat> increase, and we want to celebrate that increase. Uh, an area that I put, put in blue, it's not really up to our 85 yet, uh, but was the healthy uh, choices for meals. And you can see we've increased from 74% to almost 78%. Uh, so that's a great communication that we're doing in that area. Again, very strong results at the elementary level. Very strong results at the middle school level. And some excellent strengths here. And I'd like to highlight just the, the bullying behavior, addressing bullying behavior. Uh, great focus, Dr. Dugan. Uh, has helped it with the principals, have great uh, uh, leadership in that area. You can see the great increase we've had in that area. As well as you can also see at the middle level starting to how important it is to have athletics and activities. <coughs> and you can see that's up to 93% feel that's very important. So those are some very good strengths there. Very positive. And at our high school as well, I would highlight some of the same ones. The safety for our students is very strong. And then the bullying behavior, addressing that. You can see that we're making a great Im impact in that. So, uh, of course, the foundation also with the Rachel's Challenge Program was another facet of that this year. So very much strengths uh, in our high schools as well. So our levels came out very nicely for our parent surveys. Our 21st century programs, we just heard all about. We have data on an annual basis to give us some indication of that. And I love that second one. 90.4% say that the program is a challenge for their student. And don't we want to challenge our students? And we saw that at the other levels as well, academically challenging our students. Transportation, the area I wanted to highlight here was the bus company is responsive to my concerns. We went up from 68% to 78.3%. Uh, and I know uh, Mr. Green has been working with the first student to make sure that that was a, a, a focus for them. And as well as you can see, the bus company has enhanced communication. And part of that we wanted to make sure was happening this year. And you can see a great increase there as well. Well, we had lots of comments, and we are just now analyzing those comments. Uh, Read Lion, for example, analyzes and looks at all the technology comments, as well as the different ind individual schools are looking at those. Uh, we've already had Mr. Payne bring forth uh, staff uh, comments, and we've analyzed that. And at senior leadership, we analyze all those comments. Uh, again, I love these com comments. 94.6% say they are satisfied with the Olathe Public Schools and give us a high rating, and that's very good and something that we should be definitely proud of. So we are taking all this data. The data has been disaggregated. All the buildings have their data. The building leaderships have uh, the data, and they are analyzing that and determining if there are areas that they can improve, but also areas that they should monitor that are strengths so that they can keep them as strengths at their schools. So that just gives you a little glimmer into the data that we're looking at in the district from both staff and parents. Thank you, Dr. Banikowski. I'm sure that we have some comments or questions at this point. Well, I, I would say that um, I look at this and there's a, a lot to be very proud of. The board, however, is always looking to make improvements, and so I'm sure there are a few areas here. The one that really concerns me the most is um, the 
staff and the, the parents' understanding of our financial situation because that really does, it impacts all of these other areas as well. Um, and I know we kind of beat our heads against the wall because we, we're out there, we're talking about it, we've had the presentations at the board meetings, we run things on the website, but we still need to continue looking for ways to get that information in front of people and make sure that they understand it so they can understand how the decisions we make, you know, they're a lot of times run by, by budget constraints and, and, uh, and maybe we'll see some of our other areas go up even more once we, once we have that understanding out there. I also thought about that question, the response to that question in a different way in that part of what we have to do as a board is communicate that we make decisions but we are, um, I hate to use the word, at the mercy, but that's probably the accurate statement, of decisions made elsewhere in Topeka. And um, so sometimes we can't answer questions with the certainty that our staff and our families would like and that we would like as well. So I think there's an alternate reason that they might be responding mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. They're just unsure of what's happening, maybe as well. And you know, if we have to take all of this information and put it with all the other information that we gather to get that complete picture, it's student achievement scores, it's, <coughs> it's students' perceptions, it's parents' perceptions, it's attendance data. So it's all that data together that makes a complete picture to me of an organization. Very important data, but it is one piece of lots of data that we try to put together to give us information about our organization and our most important mission, and that is uh, student learning. These guys are quiet tonight. I thought they'd have a lot more to say. <laughs> okay, well, if that's if we don't have anything else, then I think we can move on with our agenda before we take our break. Everyone okay with that? Thank you, Dr. Panikowski. <clears throat> on our consent agenda this evening, we have our minutes, our reports, uh, a student trip, uh, some curriculum decisions, instructional materials, our Head Start, and um, facility rental fees. Are there any items that board members would care to pull for separate discussion or consideration? I just have a quick question on the human resources. Okay. Go ahead. Jim, just since I know a couple people that have uh, uh, resigned from a leave of absence um, because they're teaching overseas, is there a Somebody asked me the question, is there a limitation on how long people can stay on leave of absence before they have to officially resign? Professional agreement allows for a person to ask for leave of absence and not expect Okay. Just curious. Thank you. Okay, then I would accept a motion. I would move to approve consent agenda items numbered 5.01 to 5. Um, one zero as presented. <clears throat> second. Ms. Hibbs, I have a motion by Dr. Daniels and a second by Mr. Shear. Would you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Felter? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Under our bids, contracts, and agreements, the first item we have is approval of our school resource officer agreement for the 2013-14 school year. Dr. <coughs> Barry, do you have any comments to make on that? No additional comments. Board members, questions, comments? Then I would accept a motion. Move to approve the school resource officer agreement with the City of Olathe for 2013-2014 as presented. I'll second. Ms. Hibbs, I have a motion by Mr. Poland and a second by Ms. Felter. Would you call the roll, please? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mrs. Felter? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. And a profound thank you for the work that you all do in our buildings. We are very appreciative. Yes. <laughs> motion carries. 6.02, our digital projector bid. Questions or comments? 
Seeing none, I'd accept a motion. Move to award Panasonic projectors to Kansas City Audiovisual for $170,850. Epson projectors and mount brackets to W. Schiller's for $101,400. And digital lamps to Cinna Inc. for $14,400. Second. Ms. Hibbs, I have a motion by Mr. Poland and a second by Mr. Shear. Would you call the roll, please? Yes. Mrs. Belter? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Parker? <coughs> yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. The motion carries. Under our other action items, the first thing we need to do is nominate individuals to represent us at the Kansas Association of School Boards on both the nominating and the legislative committees. The first thing we will do is tackle the nominating committee. Uh, that individual would have to go to Topeka on Saturday, September 7th to help KASB interview candidates for their next leadership position. Um, no one has expressed an interest to me at this point Although Mr. Parker is looking rather excited about it. <laughs> I'm glad to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was willing to step up. So if, if it's something you feel like. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I can do it. Either or. If, you, if you'd like to do it, go ahead. You'll have a board of directors position to, to fill. I, I do have an interest in the board of directors position at some point in the future. Um, you tell me. I'm, I'm fine either way. And I know you're busy. You can have it. OK. All right. Uh, then, then if you would like to I'm sure. put my I name in nomination, I nominate um, Ms. Amy Martin for the position of on the nominating committee for KASB. Okay. Now that we've arm wrestled over this, is there anyone else who's interested in submitting their name for nomination? Okay. Then at this point, we'll take a motion to cease nominations. I move we cease nominations for the nominating committee. Second. Ms. Hibbs, we have a motion to cease nominations. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mrs. Belter? <laughs> yes. I'd move to appoint Ms. Amy Martin to serve on the Kansas Association of School Board's nominee committee for 2013. Second. Ms. Hibbs, we have a motion by Mr. Parker and a second by Mr. Poland. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mrs. Felter? Yes. The motion carries. That was very well done. <laughs> now can we do the same thing for the legislative committee? Uh, I'll accept names into nomination. I know Mr. Shear has expressed an interest. Yes. I would be happy to step up for that. Anyone else? All right, then would someone care to place his name in nomination? I nominate. Actually, we have to cease legislative committee we nomination. Okay, so we'll cease. I would move to cease legisla legislative committee nominations. Second. Ms. Hibbs, we have a motion by Dr. Daniels and a second by Mr. Parker. Would you call the roll? Mr. Poland? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Mrs. Felter? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. And I would be very happy to then appoint Mr. Shear to serve on the, leg on the Kansas Association of School Boards Legislative Committee for 2013. Very happy. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Ms. Hibbs, I have a motion yeah. by Dr. Daniels and a second by Mr. Poland. Would you call the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Ashley? Yes. Mrs. Belter? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. The motion carries. I think it's there twice. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to 7.02, a student trip. Math counts. <clears throat> Questions or comments? No, then a motion. Uh, Madam President, I would move to approve 7.02, 7.03, and 7.04 student trips. Wow. Second. So you have that, Ms. Hibbs? All right. We have a motion by Mr. Parker and a second by Ms. Felter. Would you call the roll, please? 
Certainly, Mr. Shear. Yes. Mr. Poland. Yes. Mr. Parker. Yes. Ms. Ashley. Yes. Dr. Daniels. Yes. Mrs. Martin. Yes. Mrs. Felter. Yes. Good job, guys. Okay, I think at this point we will take a comfort break and convene back here at 7 o'clock. Quieted down so nicely, I hate to make you wait. So we will move on to our recognitions portion of the evening, and I believe that uh, Matt Kolb, our Director of Communications, is going to lead us with the help of Mr. Poland. Good evening. We have numerous recognitions tonight. I'd like to welcome all of our distinguished guests. We're going to begin our recognitions tonight with a business partner. I'd like to ask Heather Schoonover from Community Development to come forward to help with this recognition. Tonight we recognize the Olathe Medical Center. The Olathe Medical Center, along with the entire Olathe Health System, has consistently been a premier business partner with the district through numerous programs that serve students, staff, and school families. OMC has been a tremendous supporter of the Olathe Public Schools Foundation and has donated more than $1 million to the foundation since it was founded in 1997. The Medical Center has been a great support to the foundation and district by targeting health and wellness projects. Grants help bring walking paths, reading programs, and support to sports medicine programming and project graduation. Each May, seniors who are planning for a career in the medical field are able to apply for the Olathe Medical Center scholarships. The Medical Center has will always work hand in hand with the district to serve those families with economic challenges. In August, they have stations at the back to school outreach to check blood pressure or provide health information. OMC contributions to the district are plentiful. A sampling includes donations to the school nurse emergency fund to provide prescriptions, eyeglasses, hearing aids, walk-in health care, and sports physicals for students. Donations to purchase health equipment for all of our health rooms, a long history of a positive collaboration to care for our student athletes, OMC's financial support of impact testing, which has proven to be a valuable tool in the diagnosis and treatment of concussions, providing first graders with the opportunity to take a field trip to OMC for Play Hospital, and the Bridging Education and Medicine or BEAM program, which allows secondary level students a chance to learn from physicians, tour facilities, participate in internships and job shadows, and also take part in community service opportunities. And these are just to name a few. Um, tonight we recognize the OMC team that has been instrumental to the partnership with the Olathe Public Schools. I'd like to ask the following individuals to come forward. Frank Devisel, President and CEO. Mike Jensen, Chief Operating and Development Officer. Please come forward. Um, Nancy Ingram, Volunteer Services Manager, and I'd also like to ask Cindy Von Felt, Executive Director of the Olathe Public Schools Foundation, to come forward as well. Thank you for all you do for the Olathe Public Schools. Next, I'd like to recognize an outstanding educator who was recently nominated by the district for a national award. Would Suzanne Golomsky please come forward, along with Principal Jim McMullen. Suzanne is a Read 180 teacher at Mission Trail Middle School and was recently named the district's Read 180 Teacher of the Year nominee. She is now in the running for the National Read 180 Teacher of the Year competition. In his nomination letter, Dr. McMullen said of Suzanne, she is an educator who truly makes a difference with her students each and every day. There is no greater impact on student learning than a highly effective teacher, and she is truly the best reading teacher I have worked with in my 17 years in education. Congratulations, Suzanne. Thank you. 
Next, we'd like to recognize a group of employees who truly make a tremendous impact on a daily basis for a select group of our students and staff. Our 18 district sign language interpreters are second to none. This is a highly skilled group of individuals who provide the communication bridge to more than 30 students in the Olathe Public Schools. Characteristics of the group include flexibility, professionalism, and continuous learning. They are often called upon to travel to another location at a moment's notice, and they support one another through peer mentoring and open communication. I'd like to ask all of our sign language interpreters who are here tonight to stand and be recognized. In addition, four of our interpreters were recently uh, recently received national certification through the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf by studying for and passing a national examination and submitting documentation to the National Registry. I'd like to ask the following individuals, along with Assistant Director of Special Services, Deb Chapel, to please come forward. Terry Custer, Stacy Hund, Michelle Hardigan-Matthews, and Treva Ullum. And congratulations to each of you. Finally, I'd like to recognize an Olathe North wrestler. Would Blake Stovall please come forward along with his coach, Josh Carroll. Blake, who is a freshman at North, recently won the Kansas State Championship in wrestling for the, for the 126 pound weight class. Blake was 35 and 7 on the year and also won the regional championship. Congratulations to you. And Blake, is your family here tonight? We'd love for them to stand and be recognized as well. Congratulations. And that concludes our recognitions this evening. At each regular meeting, the Board of Education reserves limited time for individuals wishing to address the board. We request that individual speakers limit their comments to five minutes. The clerk will monitor the time and notify the speaker when the five minute time limit has expired. Please direct your comments to the entire board. If a response is appropriate, the president will respond or refer to another individual. In an effort to respect privacy, we ask that speakers refrain from discussing personal complaints involving individual staff members or students. Those speaking are advised that public comments are videotape recorded for broadcast on the district's educational access channel and audio tape recorded as a matter of public record. Individuals addressing the board should come to the podium at the front of the room and state your name and address. I don't believe anyone has signed up in advance. Is there anyone this evening who would wish to make public comment? Seeing none, we will move along. Next on our agenda is uh, future action items. We have several listed here that you can see on the screen. Are there any items that board members would like to hold discussion right now? I would like to take the opportunity to address the dues increase 8.01 for Kansas Association of School Boards and the National Association. Any other items? I have some comments about that too. Okay. Anything else? All right, then, Ms. Ashley, you may go first. 
Since I represent the Olathe District on the Kansas Association of School Boards Board of Directors, I thought that it would be beneficial to explain to all of you why the dues increase and, and how this came about and what KASB specifically is trying to accomplish under the, the leadership of John Heim, who is in his second year, is that right, as Executive Director of KASB. Um, there's been a significant change in the organization from the administrative level, and we will continue to see changes. Uh, in my opinion, it's a personal opinion, they're in a positive direction. But they've done a really massive um, re-evaluation, I, I guess you would say, of the internal organization as to how they should be taking care and representing their membership. Uh, they recognized that there was a need for a dues increase, and I would have to say that probably the primary reason for the dues increase is that attendance at the state convention is down, and that is a revenue producer for the association. Um, there are a lot of reasons that attendance at the convention is down, not the least of which would be, as in our district, uh, fewer board members are participating in those events because of the cost of, of going to those. Sometimes it's a, a travel requirement and people don't go. Uh, we all, many of us, have full-time jobs and to give up uh, a weekend is difficult for us to do. So in general, they've seen a decrease in participation at, at the state convention. As a sidebar here, participation in the national convention is even more significantly reduced than the state convention. And that, as you might guess, is because of the cost of going to, to those conventions. But that's down. Um, I'm going to guess, and Marlon, you might correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say about 60%. It, it's very significant. So um, what KSB is doing, getting back to, to them, is looking at what other ways of delivering services to the members of our association should we be looking at and pursuing. And as you know, we've had webinars this year. They're trying to do more and more digitally uh, to reduce the cost. And they're even looking at whether or not the state convention should continue, or if it should continue on an annual basis, or what could take place at the convention. I mean, they've, we've not made any decisions at this point. It's, it's in a study, study phase. So long story short is they don't have uh, as many revenues from the convention, as well as some, from some other resources. So they decided to go ahead with a dues increase. And as you noticed from the agenda item, rather than saying it was going to be a percent increase or redo the formula, they just decided to do $700 straight across the board. And I could go into the details of the budget if you'd like, but I guess that we'd probably rather go home with the weather the way it is. <laughs> but bottom line is the $700 increase is, is kind of like peanuts to us, because this is $700 across the board. And just for you to have a comparison, the district in the state who paid the least in association dues last year, their dues were $3,900. They're going to be paying a $700 increase, as is every district across the state of Kansas who is a member. Our, our dues are set based on our student population? The formula for, and I brought that because I thought <coughs> that might be a question, the formula for arriving at the dues number is to take the total of our general fund plus LOB on March 1st, Am I doing okay, John? And then from that, deduct $10 million because our total of those two funds is more than $10 million. Then you take that times a factor, which in our case is 0. 0.0000 for 025. But and ultimately, then, it comes down to district, the size of our budget, really, is what. What basically, okay. Basically, there's mm -hmm. only one district that pays more than we do, and that's Wichita, because they're the largest district okay. in the state. So everybody will have a $700 increase. So for us, it, it's pretty insignificant as far as compared to what we've been paying in the past. So I'm not passing judgment on whether or not we should be a member of KASB. I'm just kind of trying to explain to you the rationale for the manner in which the, the increase was taken. Mm -hmm and the fact that, as far as we're concerned, it, it's extremely modest. Okay. All right. Mr. Pollan? No, I agree with that, uh, you know, the uh, increase is very modest, hardly worth arguing about, really, other than the fact, other than the principle of the thing. Here's the organization that is representing the school boards and the, the students in our school district, and we all know what's happened to our budgets, and I, I guess I think it's a little audacious for them to ask for a budget increase when we see what's happened to the school districts. So I'm not, I'm not a proponent of getting out of KSB. I just think we ought to not 
pay the increase just on, on the principal thing. Because I think it's, like I said, I, you know, I have no other thing to say other than think that it just sends the wrong message to the, comp to the organizations that's representing us to, you know, ask for an increase when we've suffered so much in the last three years. And I think it's sort of crazy to, for them to be asking for it, no matter how meager it is. And if I was some of those other school districts that they said $700 across the board, I would really be complaining because of, uh, you know, it's uh, much more impactful on them. You know, Rita said that's almost a, you know, a, what a close to a 25% uh, increase for them. For us, it's a 1%. So I, I think, you know, sort of traditional in the, in this day and age of, in, you know, of stress on, uh, on revenues, uh, people say, you know, we're losing revenues in one place, so we need to make them up in some other place. I say, no, cut your costs and keep your, your revenues, you know, deal with the revenues you've got. So I would, I will vote against it just because I think uh, not to get out of the KSB. I think they, we get a lot out of it, but I think it's a uh, pretty, uh, uh, wrong of them to ask for this at this time. So that's the statements I have. Okay, anything else? The next item on our agenda is uh, um, our monthly Head Start Director's Report. Um, no comments or questions there? Then are there any topics for discussion that board members would like to bring up right now? Just, just a couple just came from the meetings tonight. Okay. Uh, the, the ropes that Leah asked for at graduation, is that something that we can, I didn't really hear a response to her. Yeah, it's something we'd look into in terms of with our high school principals. It would not be possible yet this year, right. no, unfortunately, right. but we can certainly bring that back. Okay, I just didn't, didn't hear a, requ or a response to that. And then, uh, you know, the tremendous uh, results we got from the parent uh, survey, I'd just like to say that that's great. Uh, I guess I would like to, uh, this isn't necessarily a, a uh, topic for discussion, but just a comment. I didn't think it was the time to do it before, but uh, I, I wish there was some way of translating those parental results into election turnout because we still had what only seven percent turnout, and I think it's uh, you know it's a uh, sad commentary in the fact that we only get seven people turning out for such an important you know election as who you know governs the control of your your kids. So I just wish there's some way of translating that. It's once again just a comment. So. All right, thank you. Dr. Berry, what do you have for us? Just a few comments tonight. Um, early this morning, I had an email encouraging me uh, that I could go down in history as the first superintendent to call a snow day in May. <laughs> um, and my response at the time was, nice try. I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll kind of watch it and see. I did hear the number, and I, I don't know if it was as of yesterday or if it included today's, but we have canceled uh, over 120 events this spring. Uh, so it's, again, been very difficult on our kids to try and participate in softball, baseball, track, and so forth. But uh, we'll keep after it. Um, we are down to 15 school days, uh, really officially 14 and a half. Um, the good news is after that, it's only 57 work days until we get the kids back. So uh, um, it's not, not too far uh, of a turnaround there. I want to share just a couple things. One thing that you may have seen, um, U.S. News and World Report does a study where they rank high schools. So they rank the high schools in Kansas, and we made the list. Uh, very pleased to report, if you hadn't seen it, Olathe North uh, West High School ranks as the number four high school in the state. Uh, Sumner Academy of Arts and Sciences and two Blue Valley schools, and then Olathe Northwest. So we're very pleased to make the top end of that uh, ranking this year, and, and uh, we'll share that out. Uh, factors that are considered include uh, student-teacher ratios, college readiness, which is uh, measured by advanced placement tests, math proficiency, reading proficiency. They look at whether low-income black and Hispanic students were performing better than <coughs> average compared to uh, similar students across the state. I mean, there's a pretty extensive look in terms of how they rank the school. So again, we're very pleased with that. Yesterday, we had the chance to go uh, recognize a senior from Olathe North High School, Brendan Porter. I thought maybe his artwork was gonna be here tonight, but Google uh, nationally runs a competition called Google Doodle, uh, where you take the Google logo and make it into an art uh, picture. 
130,000 or more entries, and we had the state of Kansas winner, Brendan Porter, a beautiful design. And so there was a, an assembly at Olathe North. Uh, they passed out Google T-shirts, uh, bright colors, which the, the students liked, of course. Um, but he has the chance now to go on and can win a $30,000 scholarship as well as a $50,000 technology grant for Olathe North. So uh, people are pulling for Brendan, uh, obviously. The legislative session uh, picks back up next week for their wrap-up session, veto session. And of course, uh, just very briefly to share, the biggest challenge is gonna be the budget still. And really it's been pointed out, it's not so much as even for next year as it is longer term. Uh, that's gonna be so critical in terms of how the state positions itself uh, for ending balances and to have enough money to uh, fund everything. We've been told that education will, will be held harmless for next year, and, and of course we're hoping for that. Uh, but it's really much longer term that, that they are looking at. I want to also mention that we are still out there making bond uh, issue presentations. Uh, again, trying to be very, very transparent. I want to make this, again, publicly tonight when we talk about uh, how it's being presented out there with the information. When we share the figure, $244.8 million, and the question then is usually asked, how much more is this going to cost me? And that's where the answer comes in. It's no increase. But we are very transparent to share that we are... Uh, asking our community to, to continue the tax that we currently levy. And we recognize that if we didn't have this bond issue or if it didn't pass, that at some point taxes would start to come down. But we also would not have the fifth high school, the 36th elementary, more technology, take care of aging facilities and so forth. Um, so again, we are out there trying to work pretty hard at that. And, and the question that still also comes up is about the ballots. They will be mailed and arrive in... Uh, the mailboxes of those who are registered voters approximately May 22nd, and then they have until noon on Jul June 11th to return those. Um, a lot of information is still on our website, and we still have a number of uh, presentations to give out there. And the last thing I want to mention, and I shared this at the Chamber the other day, saying that we have our Chamber of Commerce event coming up, and that happens to be graduation. On uh, May 19th, we hold this event called Graduation that brings relatives into town who buy gas. Uh, they go to the restaurants and eat. There are gifts for the graduates. Uh, it's really a, a boon to our economy for that day. Um, so that's our, uh, our chamber event on that. But as you know, obviously, it's a very uh, grand culminating experience for kids who have been in our district now for 13 years and are graduating uh, an exciting time. And that's uh, 7 o'clock on the 19th at all four high schools. We will be bringing back, after we finish this graduation, a full report to the board about um, possible change in venue for the future uh, in terms of where we might be able to have graduation. But uh, that's my report tonight. And do you have a weather prediction for graduation? <laughs> it doesn't matter this year. It's all, go it's all good. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bray. We <coughs> will need an executive session this evening. I think that I need about 15 minutes, and I know you need some. 30, time. please. 30? OK, so let's, let's set aside 45 minutes this evening, and we will plan to take action when we return. Would someone care to make a motion? I move that the board adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel, to discuss matters relating to employer, employee negotiations, and for the preliminary discussion relating to the acquisition of real property. And the board return to the regular meeting at what, 7 10? I get 7 10. 8 10. 8 10, yeah, 8 10. Thank you. 8 15? Yeah. Okay, 8 15. Second. In this room, the executive session is required in order to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed, to protect the district's right to the confidentiality of its negotiating position and the public interest, and to protect the district's financial interest and bargaining position. Second. Ms. Hibbs, I have a motion by Mr. Poland and a second by Mr. Parker. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Ashley? Yes. Mrs. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Felter? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Shear? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Poland? Yes. 